Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast Special Edition Series where I go over each and every 2024 NCAA Men's College Basketball Conference Tournament. This is the sixth of 32 shows, and this show will focus on the Northeast Conference. We'll go over the seeds. We will make our predictions on how the bracket will play out, and we will do a lot more. Again, this is the Northeast Conference. All right, your one seed in this league, the Central Connecticut Blue Devils, nineteen and ten overall, thirteen and three in conference play. Your two seed, the Merrimack Warriors, nineteen and eleven overall, thirteen and three in conference play. Your three seed, the Sacred Heart Pioneers, sixteen and fifteen overall, ten and six in conference play. Your four seed. Le- the Lemoyne Dolphins, 14 and 16 overall, 9 and 7 in conference play. Your five seed, the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights, 15 and 16 overall, 9 and 7 in conference play. Your six seed, the Wagner Seahawks, 13 and 15 overall, 7 and 9 in conference play. Your seven seed, the LIU Sharks, 7 and 21 overall, 6 and 10 in conference play. And your eight seed, the St. Francis Red Flash. 8 and 21 overall, 3 and 13 in conference play, and did not qualify. Stonehill, 4 and 27 overall, and um, 2 and 14 in conference play, but they were ineligible for the tournament anyway due to transition. So is Lemoyne, which is unfortunate for them because they've had a good year this year. All right. So without further ado, here we go. There's only four rounds of this tournament. So. The quarterfinals begins Wednesday, March 6th. Eight seed St. Francis, one seed Central Connecticut. Central Connecticut's just awesome. They've been the co beasts of this conference, um, along with Mary Mack, led by Alan Jane Rawls, over 15 a game. I project Central Connecticut 17.7 at home, total 138 and a quarter. And by the way, all the um, conference tournament games are held at the um, higher seeds home campus. So. 17.7 total, 138 and a quarter for that one. So I have Central Con moving on. 7 seed LIU, 2 seed Merrimack. Um, Merrimack arguably has the player of the year in the lead in Jordan Durkak, averaging almost 18 a game. I have Merrimack 13.8, total 138 and three quarters. So I have Merrimack advancing. The third of four in the quarterfinals, 6 seed Wagner. And three seed, Sacred Heart. Um, Wagner, um, they have a go-to guy in Melvin Council, who's a junior. And Sacred Heart is a pretty deep team, led by Nico Gallette. Um, on their home court, I have Sacred Heart eight and a quarter, so on 36, and... 13 20th, so therefore I have Sacred Heart moving on. In the last of four quarterfinal games, four, five seed Fairly Dickinson, fourth seed Lemoyne. You got to hand it to Lemoyne. Um, a newbie to the league, really exceeding expectations. They have two go to guys, Akeem Cleary and Luke Sutherland. Um, both seniors. Um, and Fairleigh Dickinson, who obviously pulled off the big upset last year of Purdue, um, is led by Ansley Alamore, over 16 a game. I actually have Sacred, or not Sacred Heart, um, Fairleigh Dickinson as a three quarter favorite here on the road, total 147 and a quarter. And Lemoyne isn't um, eligible for the tournament anyway because of the transfer from Division Two. So I'm going to pick Fairleigh Dickinson in a seeding upset over Lemoyne. Although um, Fairleigh Dickinson may not be favored in that game anyway. All right, the semifinals will be on Saturday, March 9th. Um, the first of two, five seed Fairleigh Dickinson, one seed Central Connecticut. Um. Fairly Dickinson won't have a magical um, march like they did last year. I have Central Con 7.7. They're the better team and they're home. So I'm going to have Central Connecticut advance to the championship. And the second 
of two semifinal games, three seed Sacred Heart, two seed Merrimack. My projection is Merrimack by four and three quarters. Um, I actually think that this is going to be a pretty good game. Um, both these teams are solid, but I just think Merrimack is better. They have probably the player of the year in the conference in Durkak and their home. So I'm going to take Merrimack to advance. And then the championship, which will be on Tuesday, March 12th on ESPN 2, 7 o'clock Eastern, two seed Merrimack, one seed Central Connecticut. Um, great game. This would be outstanding, and it's only appropriate for these two to be the last two standing. Like I said at the top, these two have been the beasts of this conference the whole year. Merrimack, led by Deckrack and Adam Clark and Devin Savage. And on the other side, Central Con with Jen Rose and Jordan Jones and Kellen Amos. Um, but I think home court makes a big difference here. Um, I just think that as good as Durkak is, I just think Central Con's the better team. I have them projected four and a quarter over Merrimack. So therefore, I have the Blue Devils of Central Connecticut getting the auto bid into the NCAA tournament. All right, consolation prize for Merrimack, I think, will be the CBI. The loser of this, what I think is inevitable title game, I think goes to the CBI. I don't think any of these teams are good enough for the NIT. Um, so, the um, conference tournament odds... I don't have them here on FanDuel, um, but I have them, uh, the DraftKings ones pulled up. Um, Central Con and Mary Mac reach plus 120, Sack Cards plus 850, LeMoyne's 14 to 1. But if LeMoyne wins, um, so, um, if it were classifying intuition wins the NEC tournament championship, the tournament runner up will be rewarded. That's how it should be. Because I remember the one year a team that was new to the NCAA won the conference tournament and then the regular season champ won it and they didn't even win or they didn't even make the final, which wasn't fair. Um So Lemoyne's fourteen one, Wagner twenty eight to one, Fairleigh Dickinson forty five to one. LIU 250 and St. Fran PA 300. Um, so if there's value on any team to win, I mean, you just, I mean, if I would have to place a value bet, it'd be on the team that won it last year, Fairly Dickinson, and that's 45 to 1. I would have to drive um, 30 minutes to Pennsylvania to place that bet because I can't place it here in New Jersey. So. My value bet would be Fairleigh Dickinson. I would throw Central Con in with High Point and Eastern Kentucky and some of these other teams and maybe even Wright State, who I have winning the Horizon League one. I think that'd be a fun one as well to do. Um, other tournament possibilities, we went over that already. I think the loser... Of the inevitable um, Central Con Merrimack game goes to the CBI. I think one of those teams is good enough to go there. And then coaching opportunities. Um, obviously, we saw um, Fairly Dickinson win its game last year. And um, advanced to the second round. So Tobin Anderson ended up going, being one and done there for a good reason as he went to. Iona. Um, so, Patrick Sellers, I think, could get a better job. Same for Joe Gallo. Um, but on the flip side, hot seat. Um, Rob Krimmel has been at St. Francis for a long time. 
He is 46 years old. I wouldn't be shocked if his days there are numbered. Um, Rod Strickland, will he get a year three? Probably. Um, I think Wagner's coach will still be around. Um, and Stonehill's in transition, so I do not see uh, Chris Kraus going anywhere. Um, teams that could be better next year or take a step back. Um, you think Fairly Dickinson is going to be a little better um, or about the same, maybe a little better in conference play next season? Some of their good scores are still young, even though um, Sean Moore's a senior, and then there's the transfer portal too, which is always dreaded. Um, but obviously the team that surprised the most was LeMoyne. Maybe they take another step forward. Um, Stonehill, to me, was a very big disappointment. I thought they'd be a little bit better. Um Merrimack and Central Con, I think, have both exceeded expectations in addition to LeMoyne. Um, you know either uh, Sellers or Gallo will probably win the coach year, probably Sellers. But, I mean, Nate Champion should get some consideration, too. He got LeMoyne to 9-7 and seven in that league in its first year. So he has a lot to be proud of as well. So there you have it for the Northeast Conference. Next up will be the OVC.